Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And yesterday we had uh, John Moore do an amazing update of the preparedness list. That we call it the 10 plus 10 plus 10 list. Uh, and you have some major news to announce, John. Uh, let's uh, start with that and then we'll move on to Ann's news. Uh, John, what's happening? Uh, we're being told by this, this information is coming from people in the Department of Homeland Security, FEMA, and the, and the military, that uh, there will be martial law in this country between now and Memorial Day. Uh, two of the three sources are pointing specifically towards March as being the most likely month. In addition, uh, one of these people, a military officer, was at a briefing. They were told in very general terms about what they'd be told to do soon, and they further told them that they did not follow orders that their immediate families would be murdered. Uh, the military officer himself is, is considering committing suicide as a result. Uh, one Boy. last thing. Uh, That's, uh, I it couldn't be more serious. Men that uh, 150,000 Palestinians are uh, been, have been cleared to be brought into this country. Uh, these are military-aged men, 18 to 40 years old, which, which we believe have had at least some rudimentary military training and will probably get more once I get here. And that's what I got. Wow. Now, uh, here's a likely scenario. <clears throat> uh, the government obviously is trying to get pushback. They want pushback because they want to demonize preppers. They want violent and people pushback. Are, and, they, and they want not, violent not pushback. People writing letters to congressmen. They want violent no. pushback. <clears throat> Right, and they want to push back because they think they can put predator drones. They think they can put robots like the uh, sword robot. They had 30,000 at the end of Gulf War uh, II uh, and deployed those here along with 30,000 drones. They uh, believe they can put foreign troops, including Russians, former CIS nation, Palestinians, etc., Mongolians, by the way. They had Mongolians they're training oh, here yes, as well. Oh, yeah, they did. We've got confirmation of that. Right. Now, I've, I've seen these people face-to-face -face when I was in Colorado, so this is not a delusion. This is a fact. I worked also with FEMA and HAZMAT teams uh, and the FBI. We did work on, on Operation Top Off of Dark Winter with uh, uh, John... <coughs> with, with, uh, uh, the director of hazmat teams for Colorado and the uh, and FEMA, and I can tell you that the plan of the government is <clears throat> they want to precipitate a crisis. Now they're precipitating a financial one with a so-called fiscal cliff, <coughs> and there's likely to be a sovereign debt crisis. From my other sources, that sovereign debt crisis is probably going to hit Britain by the end of January. It may well hit. Japan, they figure, in the next month or two because they're in a major drop. The Japanese yen is, is dropping significantly versus the euro and the dollar. The, uh, dollar the Basically, people are putting the money into banks around the world at negative interest because of the Fed, which is neither Fed nor Reserve, is at zero, which means they're putting the money, the, literally the banks are taking their money and not giving positive interest. The, the, the Treasury and bond uh, prices are the highest they've been in Britain for 300 years and 200 years plus in America, 240 years. So what's going to happen is we're going to have a sovereign debt blowout uh, by the spring, and I expect uh, the reason why they want to get the guns is they want to control the population when they, they, they trash the dollar, uh, which will, if it goes down gradually, if it wasn't a disaster, it would be divided by 30 to 40 percent by this time next year. Uh, prices of food are going to spike because they're allowed hydrofracking in areas that are destroying the food supply and withdrawing water from the aquifers. They're going to shut down the Mississippi and Missouri rivers because there, there's a fight going on between contributories so that the coal uh, barges that bring coal down to the power, power generators are going to drive the price of, of, of energy up dramatically. Uh, while food prices are, are causing countries like China that are desperate and have the cash to pay top dollar to get our soybeans and other crops. So what's going to happen is a lot of animals are going to be slaughtered or are, have been slaughtered. So food and meat prices are going to go through the ceiling by the spring. Uh, we're going to have major food shortages, major collapse of business, and the Obamacare, besides this fiscal cliff, is a major attack on the middle class. So when Obama tries to say he's out for the middle class, yes, he is out for the middle class to destroy them. That's right. uh, I, ex I expect that uh, the pushback will be this. Anybody stupid enough from Palestine, Mongolia, or anywhere else thinks they're going to come to America and disarm Americans, they might as well write their relatives their last letter because they're going to come home in a box if we find enough parts of their bodies. Uh, the government that thinks they can pass these laws that are unconstitutional and enforce them, they're crazy. And I tell people right now, anybody who's out there in the military or civilian militia, 
don't pass in your guns, ever. And uh, I'm <clears throat> coming up with ideas on non-lethal and other technologies that are exotic, and I will put those out in the blogosphere uh, so that people will be aware of them, and they'll be able to assemble them themselves. They're, in some ways, much more dangerous than guns, uh, and uh, absolutely can't be controlled by the government, and you don't even hear a sound to warn you that it's being sh used. Well, so, I encourage you to do that, Dr. Bill, and, and to do that as soon as possible. Well, I'm just going to mention a couple right on here so people will know. First off, anybody out there with a few skills and an idea of either compressor or if you're into scuba diving, you can set up an air compressor and compress small chambers and set up a, a feeding system with a backpack of, of ball bearings. So get as many ball bearings as you can and make an air compressor gun with that. Number two, if you have a flux uh, a welder system. You can actually heat flux with a small lamp. <clears throat> then you uh, put those flux into what's called a linear accelerator tube, which anybody from a uh, science project can create a linear accelerator. The flux coming out of the end is moving at hundreds of thousands of foot per second uh, and is at 10,000 degrees, so it'll cut through a man building a tank and cut through an armored personnel carrier like butter. Uh, the third weapon <clears throat> system is a tunable scalar weapon that if you aim it at a specific distance and range, it will make anybody down, ro down road uh, nauseated and seizuring within seconds. Uh, none of these weapons, and I'm thinking of other ones, will uh, be anything that they can develop any defense against. No amount of tank, armor, or anything else will stop them. Because well, uh, the high-speed accelerated point, ball bearings will rip right through the side of a so-called titanium hardened hull of a uh, APC or whatever, like it's butter. If you can accelerate a ball bearing at a speed far exceeding any any known bullet. Well, the ball bearings are steel, and then you get one going fast enough, it could do that kind of damage. Yes, it will. Okay, so what, what the government needs to understand is this is foolhardy. Anything that they think they're going to do, obviously uh, what I've heard from my other sources is the, the, the main guys in the New World Order are very freaked out at Obama. They know he's a hard communist. We had on the show four years ago two phys a physicist who was in a company of two physicists from Russia and said our future president in the early 90s, 1992, would be Barack Hussein Obama, and he's a communist from the Communist Party, GRU, KGB, and he's a double agent. He will be your future president. He was knighted and, and, and selected by Zvignu Brezhninsky, who is a globalist, who is, a, uh, if you want to call it, one of the globalist operatives of the Rothschild International Bankers who run everywhere in the world. And uh, they've selected this maniac. Now they want to pull him because they realize he's going to push the buttons too fast and the public's going to react. Now, even if there is a, uh, a, a major attack by the government, this is a war they can't win. They may be able to take a few, haul a few people off. They may be able to execute a bunch of us who are on the red list, your dead list. But I can tell you, the secret police... Secret Service, <clears throat> FBI, CIA, we can contact and say the Pentagon, generals, military, they're not going to go for this. This is not American. And That's as right. much as they're fools that are coming over here from Palestine or these other countries, you need to take notice now. You come over here, we're going to kill you. We're not going to play with Absolutely. you. We're not going to just zip tie you. We're going to kill you. We're not even going to send your remains back to your country. We're going to incinerate you after your remains. And we're going to have a mass grave of idiots that think they can come here with a fully automatic weapon and make Americans get into the truck. Ain't going to happen. Well, they're in for a rude awakening. Well, Dr. Bill, uh, my 15 minutes is up. I'll let you turn over to uh, Ann Morrison. Yeah, thanks, John. That was amazing news. And keep okay, us aboard. So, again, this is their current plan. It's very changeable, like a snake. So don't believe it if it doesn't happen right then. But this is what they are, their greatest desire for 2013 is. Uh, and your comments of what's going on with John's news. And then you have lots of new news in terms of volcanic activity and earth changes. Yeah. Um, well, I think what, do you think of, what do you think of what John announced there? I'm just astonished and... Um, I'm really glad that you have him on the show, so that we can get yeah. this information out to uh, to yeah, your but, listeners. Uh, absolutely, do not put it past in your guns. Absolutely, say it's unconstitutional. And if there's people starting to come house to house to see if they can search for guns or set up amnesty periods, etc., and don't pass in your guns for bread, like they are up in Los Angeles. Only a nut would do that because they realize what the government's intentions really are. After the amnesty period, martial law. Air. 
Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report. And, uh, Ann, you had some important news about uh, Fukushima and the NRC. Let's get into that. Yeah, I wanted to um, let people know that the uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, they haven't up until this time, well, we've been having CMEs hit the earth. That's a coronal mass ejection that is a very complicated, very intense magnetic field that is ejected by the sun. And if it's earth directed, will interrupt our power grid, among other things, because it interacts with our magneti- magnetosphere, which are the lines of magnetic force that protect us from the um, uh, space debris that otherwise would would uh, come through. Uh, it captures especially the electrons, and uh, they're very fast moving and carry a negative charge. It, doesn't do much for the protons. The protons energize the sky, and the um, um, anyway, the NRC has decided that they're going to address a the uh, that the electrical grid is vulnerable to a prolonged outage caused by extreme space mm-hmm. weather. Well, we know that uh, from uh, talking to Ernie Gunderson's wife and Ernie and talking to other people that are getting feedback from the NRC that are harping on this isn't being ignored by the government departments in the NRC. They know that this is now in the blogosphere, this fact that we've talked about this with you and with Chris Harris and other nuclear experts, and uh, they can't ignore it. Uh, if they have a major CME at Carrington event of 19, 19, uh, sorry, 1859, mm-hmm. uh, the power grid and nuclear reactors will go into hot shot down and they will lose their critical backup power and uh, you'll have a nuclear explosion. Yeah, and they know also that their emergency backup generators uh, have been fried by ground currents caused by CMEs. I mean, that's happened at, at numerous nuclear plants in the United States over the past two years. And I right. think I've reported on some of that, and so has Chris Harris. Yeah, so exactly. So what they're going to do is they're going to consider uh, a, a backup power for their spent fuel pools, and, it, and it, the backup power should last um, two years. So they're expecting the power grid to be down for two years, should... Uh, Carrington event. Now that was a, that was finally decided to be an X54 um, ejecta from the sun. The, the, the flare itself was an X54, and the CME that was ejected with it that did the damage to the telegraph lines um, accompanied that X54 flare. But it arrived a couple of days later. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. So uh, we have volcanic activity. We have X54 flares. These kind of things, things are going to increase dramatically in the next two years. I would say the chances of a major CME knocking a power grid in the northern hemisphere is roughly 80 to 90 percent in the next two years. Would you say that seems reasonable? Well, yeah, they're putting some counterintelligence out on that. They're saying that maybe we're, that we're not going to reach the peak in 2013. They say they That's not true. They, 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 they know. Yeah, I, it's, uh, all of my sources from regular and classified sources tell me the peak is going to occur in this year and next year, 2013, 2014, and the passage of the C 2012 S1 uh, super comet, 26 mile or larger comet, according to Professor McCanny, is likely to precipitate a major CME. We also have the research of Dr. Mueller, who was at UC Berkeley for years, 1980. I think it was 85, let me look at the, yeah, 1984, he published his book, which you can get at Amazon, called Nemesis, the Death Star, and he refers it to, to, in the Inaccio expert uh, film that was published in 2011, he calls it Nemesis, the Sun's Evil Twin. Now, I think that his theory is rock solid and nerdy for all these years since 1984, and that's a long time, we're talking about 28 years. No one has been able to counteract Dr. Mueller's research. Nobody. So, if you look at this, it f- fully explains the red dwarf star pulling in, which is the most common star in the, in the galaxy. Uh, and uh, 70% to 80% of all the, the stars in the galaxy have, are binary, and about 14% or so are tri- have trinary, have three stars. <clears throat> this is a very common pattern to see one massive star, which is, and dwarf star is likely one tenth or less mass than the Earth. We know that the uh, this uh, dwarf star is likely two to three uh, uh, 
uh, you know distances from the solar system, solar distances for the size of the, of the solar system, out so it literally circulates in around 3,600 years, which in perfect fits in perfectly with the events that happened at the time of Moses, uh, and uh, uh, sorry, not 20, 3,600 years, uh, 26 million years, and as it comes in every 26 million years, it causes extinction level events when it pulls in comets from the Oort cloud. There are other cycles that precipitate other disasters that occur at 3,600 years, at 10,800 years, 105,000 years, and 360 years that are inducing ice ages. So there's solar and galactic weather intervened by specific events and alignments that are major changes on the Earth. And right now, volcanism is increasing. I talked to Alexander Bachman, who's here now. And he has a major release of information that was published in San Francisco a few weeks ago about a discovery at the south end of the Baja California, the Sea of Cortez, and it's the terminus of the San Andreas Fault. In the last year, I think there have been three or four, 7.2 plus major superquakes, and now they've discovered a major under oceanic volcano down there that's precipitating all these super earthquakes, which are likely to precipitate a, if it's a major eruption because it has real light in it, a major super earthquake which will trigger off the San Andreas Fault to cause California to have major problems. Hi, Dr. Deagle. So, this is Alexander yeah. Bachman. Hi. Yeah, hi. Yeah, to Alexander, give us all the details because you discovered this. You pulled yeah, up the research. I'm the data. I'm just going <clears> to <throat> quote from the scientists, okay? These are scientists, all right? I'm not trying right, to... You're quoting from the actual published says, article. It's only 100 kilometers from land, and when the sun is setting, you can see Cabo from where the volcano, underwater volcano is. She said right. both the Baja Peninsula and mainland Mexico near Alarcón Rice have cities and luxury resorts. And uh, the rhyolite lava carries more gas and volatile things that are likely to cause explosions than basalt. And when the magma meets the water, it vaporizes instantly, driving an even more explosive eruption. Quote, there's definitely explosive deposits there, and that is of extreme concern, given that the ridge is so close to land and that the tsunami potential of a big explosion there. Paduan said, we don't know how to explosive, and that is something we are definitely trying to figure out. So there you go. Yeah. Amazing. Well, just with that, just with that alone is a confirmation of the same thing that's ha happening over there in, um, San, uh, in Santorini in Greece. The same thing's happening in Italy. It's, I mean, it's the, all the coastlines, especially on the Pacific Rim. All the countries around the Pacific Rim, all the tectonic plates are separating and expanding. And this is because our planet is going into birth pangs. It's very simple to understand. Yeah, it really is. Now, the birth pangs, I believe that people like uh, Senator Feinstein and these senior government officials have full knowledge that there is a extinction level event coming. I can't put a date on it. Uh, we talked last year that uh, John had some source of data indicating that it was coming into the inner solar system. Now, remember, this takes 3,600 plus years to do that. Uh, the It would say not the nemesis dwarf star, but it could be that they're watching nemesis as well. We don't know what it is. What we can say is that the globalists, all their actions portray that there's some object coming in, whether it's a comet or a planet-sized object, that will cause major cataclysms on Earth, and they want control before these extinction-level events occur. That's what we could analyze. Well, you know, so many people are coming at me, against me right now, because uh, we said 2112, 2012 was the big day. No, 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 no. It's a cyclical... Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And... Um, the uh, Alexander, this uh, story about what's going on in the south end of the Sea of Cortez, um, you see the war going on in Mexico. There's more dead there than there has been in years and years of war in Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, multiple times now, exposing the evil doings of Felipe Calderon and all his uh, uh, henchmen, you know, killing people. And it turns out in her new book, Mexico in Llamas, which is Mexico in Flames, Annabelle Hernandez, it's at conscienciaradio.com. I just spoke about it. Uh, I mean, she's, she hits it right on the nail. Mexico is dead. Maybe we should get her on the show sometime, Will. Do you want to bring her... 
Yeah, if you want to bring her on the show, that would be worthwhile because we have you on sometimes multiple times. I think this last week you've been on a bunch of times. Uh, talk about spiritual things. We have Pastor Dave uh, Lee on, and the two of you are great having you on. By the way, uh, starting on the 9th, uh, we'll have an hour where both you and Pastor Dave will be on every Wednesday. And we'll cover controversial things. In fact, we have had some, a lot of positive and a few negative feedback. What people have to understand is when I pre-screen people like Pastor Dave, the radical things he's teaching, because a lot of people said, we want you to publish uh, your statement of faith. Well, my statement of faith uh, is very radical. It is the original way that was taught by Jesus. It's not the disturbed and truncated and abbreviated or milk and cookies way of many of the common churches nowadays. It's the special forces Christianity you need to have to survive the tribulation that's coming. Precisely. I mean, it's about the simplicity or the singularity of understanding what Jesus Christ represents, all right? Right. Mm -hmm. He represents the transformation of human beings into a different kind of creature. He represents changing your heart of stone with the commandments written on it like rules into a heart of flesh with his DNA coded into your very actions and the very nature of your being. That's what makes it different. Uh, that's what makes it different is that you're no longer just redeemed by God where your sins are taken away. You're transformed into a new creature. Well, and, when the uh, Holy Spirit is with you, you can feel inside every um, uh, part of your body. Your DNA lights up like um, like uh, traffic lights. I mean, it's just amazing. Right. Now, let's get into some of the things. Let's analyze uh, uh, 2012. Uh, what would you say about 2012 in terms of what's happened in the world? The positive and negative things are going on, uh, Anne and, and uh, Alexander. Well, I'll let Anne go first if she wants, or if you yeah. want, I can yeah, take it, Anne. Yeah, and you can talk about what you've seen. A lot of people say they don't see anything happening. I see everything. I mean, you well, mentioned well, about oh, them yeah, cutting off the water at the rivers for the for the barges. You mentioned so many things about earth changes. Let's go through all the positive and negative things that have happened. Well, of course, all the earth changes. Uh, we have volcanoes that have been dormant for 25 or 30 years or even 50 years, and they're, they're becoming active. We have a volcano now, another volcano uh, just north of the Pue Ue volcano, and you remember the Pue Ue volcano was the one that sent ash around the world, and it closed the, the, flying, the um, airline lanes, the air lanes for, uh, southern New, for New Zealand and for southern Australia. There was so much volcanic ash in the air. Now we have another volcano called uh, Kupahui, which is just um, south of Pue Ue. <laughs> So they sound the same, don't they? Yeah, they do sound very similar. Kopa <laughs> <Kopu Uwe. laughs> Anyway, yeah, maybe, it's not yeah. sending ash so much as uh, fog. That's volcanic organic gases. It's sending out sulfur dioxide. Now, and it's sending it to uh, almost to the um, bottom part of Africa. So it's making its way across the Atlantic. And the trouble with sulfur dioxide is that it mixes with the water vapor in the air and uh, forms acid rain. So it's going over uh, the bottom part of Argentina. And when it does that and it rains, then the, the plants will die. And uh, the same thing happened. The um, acid rain was killing the plants, the trees, in Minnesota and Wisconsin and along the East Coast. And they traced that back to California uh, because of the uh, air pollution, the smog. And that's when the um, EPA got started, and they formed the South Coast Air Quality Management District, which was not bounded by political boundaries. It, it had its own boundary system, and they went in and they determined point sources, and they determined um, uh, mass sources, and they clamped down, and, you know, they have a different gasoline now in, in uh, Southern California. And the uh, acid rain stopped. So um, sulfur dioxide is a very bad um, pollutant um, because it, when it's all, it falls as an acid. By the way, the biggest amount of acid uh, rain is coming out of uh, Mount Erebus in Antarctica and volcanoes all over the Earth, including under Oceanic. They exceed by tens of thousands of times the amount of radiation of acid rain generated by plants, except in places like China and India where there's no environmental standards at all, and that's significant. So we shouldn't be trading with these countries unless we put scrubbers on their smokestacks. We've cleaned up our act here in North America. If you we're in Los Angeles, like I was uh, there visiting in 1978, uh, compared to now, the area is pristine in L.A. compared to the late 
cities. It was unbelievably polluted with uh, leaded gasoline uh, and toxins and uh, ozone all over the city and the brown smog everywhere. Uh, so uh, we've cleaned up our act here in North America, but in terms of these third world countries, India, China, Indonesia, no, they're a mess. Um, you just want to cover a little bit more of this hypothetical. I'm going to post over from Wikipedia. Nemesis is a hypothetical red dwarf or brown dwarf originally postulated in 1984 to be orbiting the sun at a distance of 95,000 astronomical units or 1.5 light years, somewhat beyond the Oort cloud to explain a perceived cycle of mass extinctions in the geological record, which seems to occur more often at intervals of 26 million. As of 2011, over 1,300 brown dwarfs have been identified and none are inside the solar system. More than more recent theories suggest that other forces like close passings of other stars or the angular effect of gravi uh, galactic gravitational plane working against the outer solar orbital plane may be a cause of orbital perturbations of some of our solar system objects. And by the way, we have started passing through the galactic plane uh, 20, 15 to 20 years ago. We're at the midpoint December 21st and we'll continue to pass through it for 15 to 20 years. But we are passing through what's called the gravitational plane, so we're passing through a change and we're now in what are called new space or we're called the torsion field as change confirmation, which affects the plasma physics of our stars and the Earth. So that, by the way, will change the movement of magma inside our planet, it'll change the movement of plasma inside the stars and increase the risk of a major coronal mass ejection. <clears throat> so that's one factor and we know that, that one of the things that the minds had correctly, even if it wasn't instant right on that day, is the change in the torsion field, which is the fifth dimensional conformational field of space-time, which forms wormholes, etc. Uh, we are now in what's called the northern side of the galactic plane as of roughly last Friday, and now we're moving into a time and space that's going to change the plasma physics of our stars. So just read on. Um, in 2011, Corin Baylor Jones did an analysis of craters on the surface of the Earth and reached the conclusion that the earlier findings of simple periodic patterns applying periodic comet showers dislodged by a hypothetical nemesis star to be statistical artifacts found the crater record shows no evidence of, for nemesis. However, in 2010, Milot and Bambach found strong evidence in the fossil record confirming the extinction uh, event periodicity originally claimed by Rope and Shepkoski in 1984, but at a higher confidence level and over time period nearly twice as long. The infrared astronomical satellite called IRAS failed to discover Nemesis in the 1980s. The two-mass astronomical survey, which ran in 1997 to 2001, failed to detect an additional star or brown dwarf in the solar system. Using newer and more powerful infrared telescope technology, able to detect brown dwarfs as cool as 150 kelvins out of a distance of 10 light years from the sun, results from the wide field uh, infrared survey explorer called WISE have not detected nemesis. David Morrison, a senior scientist at NASA, known for his work in the risk assessment of near-Earth objects, has written, no evidence for the evidence of an object like nemesis since it should have been detected in infrared sky surveys. So that's what they're saying, but my sources tell me that nemesis is out there and that it does come in, and there's other objects that pass through that are passing uh, cometary objects, even planet-sized objects, that can affect the Earth and cause plasma storms on the Sun. Welcome, welcome back, and um, just to summarize uh, this hour, as we move into 2013-2014, nothing was going to happen on the date of December 21st, uh, 2012, but two things happened. Firstly, spiritually we moved from lineal time to uh, what I call eternal time, which meant that God's perspective is going to show and also the plans of the dark side. Uh, secondly, we're seeing an unveiling, as it says in Daniel, that men will run to and fro across the face of the earth, and knowledge will greatly increase. And we do that. You've done an amazing amount of research, Alexander. We talked about the spiral galaxy and the, and the cross in the center. So many things that are show the fingerprints of God across the universe and even our DNA. Um, <clears throat> this year we've seen regime change in Libya and Tunisia. We've seen the very illegal actions of the American government, which is impeachable in this president. And if the Republicans don't impeach them, they should be impeached. Uh, we see now the actions of Feinstein and the other Senate uh, people like uh, I call the Cabal of Satan, the uh, Synagogue of Satan. Uh, they call themselves Jews, but are not. They are of the Synagogue of Satan, as Jesus would say, vipers, sons of hell, and that's what they are. They're not Jews. 
And they might call them Jews. The word Jew means praiser. That's why they were at the first of the of the procession around the walls of Jericho because they're playing musical instruments and praising God. Because when you praise God, you enter in his joy and power. And we certainly don't have that right now. We have a small nidus or a mustard seed of real Torah Jews, by and large. Most of the Jews out there, unfortunately, are Sabbatean or just secular agnostics. They've just lost their, quote, faith completely. Uh, not surprising that, according to Barry Chalmers, more than 50% of Jews turned to Sabbatite and Yaakov Frank uh, centuries ago. <clears throat> and that we now see the tale of Israel wagging the dog of America and trying to start yet another war. Uh, it's obvious that the Russians have stopped that with their ministry and their uh, taking control of the weapon systems and the uh, putting the Alexander or missile systems in Syria that any plans by Turkey or NATO to try to invade Syria will end up in a bloody disaster for NATO in the West. So um, I think that we are going to see the development of a peace treaty which I expect Obama to ratify sometime in the next year or two. I expect that partitioning of the state of Israel to follow very shortly thereafter. And I expect that after that partitioning, the Jews will have access to start their blood sacrifice, which is an abomination that shall desolate or remove Jews from part of the territory. And that will happen soon. Uh, those three signs, when they happen, are incontrovertible. I don't know the dates, but I can tell you whether it's two years or 20 years from now, that is written in God's book and it's going to happen. Now, what I expect to happen this year is whether or not there's martial law. This is the desire they have right now, and they want to incite, as John Moore said to me before the show, they want to incite a violent pushback because they really do, or they're, they're just begging to start martial law and, depose, and putting in foreign troops on American soil, whether they're federales or former CIS or Russian uh, or Mongolian. <clears throat> they want to put them in on American territory to de-arm and to crush the American public. It's not going to happen. What's going to happen is these government officials are going to get arrested, tried, and some of them, for treason, will be executed. Uh, they need to know, that's why a lot of politicians, if they have two clues, will get out of politics quickly, because if they're not sold out into this evil system, their half-life is going to get very short. Um, <clears throat> the corruption has reached the high heavens to the point where the uh, American public won't put up with it anymore. And as long as there's a righteous America, a Christian America, an armed America, an America that realizes that the rights of the individual are protected by, from the majority, and that's the nature of a republic, which is the only government God accepts. The only government God accepts is a republic. It's the only government on earth is in the nation of America that's been wheedled away and chipped away for decades and centuries. Starting most seriously in the uh, Civil War, supposedly by Lincoln, who's the prized president and hero of Obama. It's not surprising. He would like to start a civil war. He'd like to start martial law. He'd like to be a real dictator, uh, just like he wants to be a real live boy. He's Obamanokio. He wants to create destruction. So, Alexander, what would your summary be of this last year and where we're going? Well, I think this year was a tremendous year in earth changes, uh, geopolitically. I mean, just look at the board. Look what happened. We were on the brink of nuclear or thermonuclear war, and it was averted. Now even Netanyahu is sitting down with, uh, very soon with the Jordanian-Palestinian Confederation. This was announced today by Abdullah. So Abdullah right, so and we know the peace treaty is coming. The peace treaty is coming, and the peace treaty... Yeah. And, and by the way, the Vatican has already bought up most of the territory around there, and they want to convert Vatican City, the Jerusalem, into a, quote, a Vatican-controlled uh, international territory. So you don't even need a passport. They already have plans that I've seen on the books to have a superhighway from Atzerat, which is just north of Bethlehem, where this international airport will bring them in separately, directly into Jerusalem. So uh, people of all faith, it'll be a center point or showcase for the coming together of all the Abrahamic religions of Islam, of uh Catholicism of Greek Orthodox because the Greek Orthodox are trying to bring under the tent of the, of Catholics as well as the British um, uh, and their uh, <clears throat> their form of uh, Christianity uh, and what we have happening is that uh, we're moving toward a freely new world order they want to have a cashless system where everything is electronic divots March of this year the national ID is going to be imposed on every American. They want to have biometrics on everybody. They want to have <clears throat> total control, and they want to have a disarmed public. Uh, I think they're delusional. I think that there are elements within the New World Order that realized they're going too fast. Uh, my suspicion is 
whatever the set of new world order extend, uh, you know, extenuating circumstances, whether it's just an ice age, which is very possible, that by itself will ca- kill more people than a nuclear war. Uh, we have the converging 105,000, 10,000, 5 to 800 year, and the 360 year ice age cycles. Then we are passing through the galactic plane, which is going to precipitate changes in plasma in our Earth. And we haven't even talked about whether Nemesis or some other cometary object or whatever is going to pass through the Earth or nearby the Sun and cause problems. But the chance of a major Eric Carrington event in the next two years is, I think, virtually guaranteed. Uh, which means, it's a, I'd say, 80 to 90% chance we're going to have a major CME that's going to knock out the power grid and satellites in somewhere in the Northern Hemisphere. And if it doesn't damage it completely, it'll destroy it enough, you'll get social chaos. So... Um, I see a devaluation of the dollar at the best of times by 30 to 40 percent if they keep printing money. Uh, I think if the Republicans, they would like to, some of the party people like Bonner wants to keep his position as a speaker, he can't get his troops together to be stupid enough to authorize more money for Obama. Um, <clears throat> I think that Obama wants to go over the fiscal cliff because he wants to blame it on the Republicans and then cause martial law. Um, that's why he's also using this as a gun to their heads over the gun issue. Your comments, Anne. What do you think? Well, I think we can see more more seismic events, and that includes uh, volcanoes and earthquakes. We're still waiting for a large eight um, near Japan, and I think you're right. I think there will be a large one on the San Andreas Fault. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Japan and Japanese had 7.2 three weeks ago, uh, and uh, we know that the OA and the... Uh, there's other major reactors that were damaged in the previous superquake, and uh, we also know from Professor McCann <coughs> there was no P wave, so we know that this is an under oceanic tsunami that was created artificially. And we know that the Israeli Jews literally warned Japan not to give nuclear materials to Iran. The, uh, the, the expectation that Iran doesn't have nuclear weapons or Saudi Arabia, which I know, and my source, by the way, for Saudi Arabia is the Israeli IDF. They gave me the evidence, okay? So I have contacts inside the Israeli uh, secret uh, IDF, and they're fully aware of this. I mean, that's why you've never seen an Israeli jet go down, because they're not stupid. Now, we don't want to authorize Israel trying to pull the trigger for a local nuclear war, but we had to neutralize those weapons, and the facts the Russians did them, Pat the Russians on the back. I mean, nobody wants to kill more people. We don't want to continue the civil war. We need to get these non-Syrians out of the mix so they can sit down at the table with Assad and develop a new parliamentary government that will represent the people. And, uh, you know, at the ultimate end of all of the fighting and killing, they have to sit down at the table anyway, whether there's 10,000 dead or 100,000. It's well, just stupid. Uh, at least here in Mexico, we can sit down at the table and discuss, you know, the 130,000 dead. Well, the reason why is that the only liquid capital that the New World Order bankers have now is the illegal drug trade to the tune of 2 to $3 trillion per year. And a good part of that comes from Mexico, so they want to continue the drug trade. And the real drug war is between our authorized drug dealers. That's why the fight between the Sinaloa cartel and the Zetas. This is simply a matter of one group that's authorized by the U.S. government to launder money through and the other group isn't. Well, get this. Calderon left, and he left us with 80 new cartels. 80. Wow. Now, what should be happening is we should collaborate with the Mexican president to move our special forces in there and our drones and clean out the rat's nest and stop prosecuting people for using drugs, put them in the hospital if they're disabled, uh, and uh, stop filling our prisons up with people that use marijuana. Yeah. I'm not talking about making it legal. I'm talking about making it medically an issue and not a criminal offense. Well, you know, pray up, because 2013 is going to be a great year. It's going to be a positive year if people wake up. And as I say, the most important thing is you don't have to believe anything we say. Just consider the facts, ask better questions, and eventually you'll come around to the truth and take action. Happy New Year to everyone. And may 2013 and 2014 be a positive, not a negative year.